Can I get a restraining order against you, please? Clear of the closing doors, please. What's up? I'm Michelle Hammer, and you're watching Schizophrenia and the City. And today, I wanted to talk about having schizophrenia before and after meds, and mostly what the voices were like before and after meds. So today, we're going to start with before meds. What were the voices like? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Before I was medicated, the voices were evil, mean, terrible, and it was a girl in my head. It mostly was a girl in my head, and she was so evil. All day, when I would just go through life, go through high school, go through everything like that, this girl in my head would always tell me, don't say that, don't do that, don't talk, don't be like these people, don't just say that, don't, don't do anything. I say, don't raise your hand in class because you don't know the answer, you're going to be wrong. Don't say that to this person. Everything I said, after I said it, I heard a voice in my head telling me, don't speak to that person. Or anyone, just don't talk to them, you're stupid. And then I'd come home at night. I'd think in my, and as I was going to bed, going to have a nice sleep, right? I would think back, the voice in my head would attack me and say, remember when you said this to that person? You were stupid. Remember when you said this to that person? You were stupid. Remember when you said this to that? You're stupid. Everything you said was dumb. You're so dumb. Everything you say is so stupid. Don't say anything. And I would cry every night. I would cry every night, wake up with puffy eyes, and then you know, teachers, whatever, at school thought maybe she has a drinking problem. Why does she have puppy, puffy red eyes every day? Things like that, you know? Everything just gets, like, misconstrued in high school, you know? When you actually, when you go to a really big, big, big high school. And when I was in high school, it wasn't always learning about mental health. When I learned about mental health in high school, I heard that depression was being sad for two weeks or more. Okay, I was sad all the time, and I didn't know what happiness was. So being sad for two weeks or more, that, that in my head, I didn't get. So I was sad all the time, so how could I know what two weeks or more really meant? You get what I'm saying here? So also things that I did is that I'd be in class and I'd burst into laughter at the voices in my head or whatever funny thing was going on in my head. People noticed. People noticed me talking to a wall one time. It's like teachers also, teachers thought that I might be laughing at them, but no, I was laughing at the things. I know I'm saying that I'm laughing at the hallucinations or the delusions or the voices in my head, but... It wasn't always a good time. Just because I, I'm laughing, I wanted to be in the present. I remember I was taking a test one time in class, and I must have started laughing at the voices, and the teacher yells at me, Michelle, what are you doing? And I was like, taking the test? And she's just like, no, what are you laughing at? And I'm like, nothing, I'm taking the test. I go, well, are you on your phone? I was like, no, I don't have a phone. Where's your cell phone? I don't have a phone. That's, that's how old I am, that in high school I didn't have a phone for the entire time but just saying just saying like things were noticed by people i had a soccer coach that was like ah michelle michelle just loves talking to her imaginary friend over there he was a douche but that's my whole point people noticed noticed like people noticed it in me but since mental health was not recognized the same way it is now it was never brought up in a positive way. It was always brought up in a negative way of how are you acting this way? Why are you acting this way? It's negative. It was always a negative thing. And then if I did try to get help, if I did sell, sell somebody that, no, I can't do that because in my head, I, I'm not allowed to do that. Like, like no, I, I can't. I'm not allowed to. And they're like, what do you mean you're not allowed to? Like, no, like, like in my head, like I'm not like, like there might be something in my head not allowing me to do this. It was, you told somebody about me. You told somebody about me. You're not allowed to tell anyone about me. No. Now, you can't ever talk to that person again. So therefore, I, I was trying to get help, but the person I told to help me, now I'm not allowed to talk to them anymore because I shared too much information. And of course, that's all paranoia. Paranoia is, is just the worst. And it was all paranoia all the time. And I think I didn't make that clear earlier that this was all paranoia in my head, never stopping, never stopping nonstop paranoia. And it wasn't until I was actually diagnosed as bipolar, and then it was kind of like a depression. And it, in college, my sophomore year of college, I got prescribed this tiny little yellow pill. I'm not going to say what it was because I don't like people copying me on medication and things go wrong. But I got prescribed this pill, and I took it. And then it was silent. There was no voices in my head. There was nothing questioning me on everything I said and did at any point of the day. And I thought, is this, is this how life is supposed to be? because it was just so quiet. And I was like, this is amazing. I can't believe this. I, I feel so much better. Switch to 
I'm now on medication, but it's after college and I'm not on that medication anymore. I get on new meds, I get diagnosed with schizophrenia, and I'm finally on new meds. And how are things different for me now, post all of the high school, college, new meds, diagnosis, everything now? So, that I don't hear the nasty, horrible girl in my head anymore. She's gone, thank God. But I do, I do still have like you know some hallucin hallucinations, delusions, things like that. But they're not nearly as bad as they used to be. You know, if I do see something, hear something, things like that, they're kind of in a peripheral kind of a thing. I'll still laugh. I'll still burst in laughter. I'll still sometimes talk to somebody. But it's never really that serious. And it's never really gonna you know ruin my day. I'm not crying at night anymore. I'm not having a horror time all the time I'm not constantly berated by horrible voices all the time yeah sometimes they talk to me and they're getting like annoying but that's okay that they're annoying as long as they're not being nasty and mean and horrible and making me cry all the time I'm o I'm okay with that and I also have to add that you know of course I get like anxiety but it's controlled to some kind of like a normal level and I can talk to strangers now I'm not terrified of talking to other people because of like the anxiety I used to get from the girl in my head saying don't say something stupid I can talk to you know anyone that feels like they want to talk to me back I'm cool with that now and I understand you know also I do take seven medications daily and without those seven medications I would just not be able to function in life I'd be like I was back in the day of in my bed kind of and this did happen one time when I missed my meds I was in my bed going oh my god I'm terrible I say the dumbest things I told the world I have schizophrenia I'm so stupid so yeah it'll come back if I don't take my meds and that girl will come back in my head and she, she she's there she's just She's there. She's not here now. She's she's like way far away, past in the next building. You know, she's gone for now. But you know, it's scary knowing that she can actually come back one day. And I I don't ever want to hear her ever again. Like that that bitty, gone. You know, stay stay away. Can I get a restraining order against you, please? But I have to say that I I I, am, I you know with my schizophrenia, I I'm glad that I was diagnosed because it got me the right treatment. And that's what I will always say. So. That's, that's my, my story of before and after meds, schizophrenia. There we go. Thank you.